with this video, I'm going to go through the entire lesson. And what we're dealing with with this lesson is kind of a fun lesson because we get to see how much our money can be worth if we save a little bit. Um, so if this is if we're going to be saving through monthly payments is what we focus on on this one. I mean, you could change it to quarterly or whatever else you want to, but typically most people save on a monthly basis, so that's what this lesson is going to focus on. We'll go through the entire thing, so it's going to be a little bit more of a lengthy video. Um, and so that's essentially what we're going to do. If we if we save monthly payments, how much money are we going to have at some point in the future? And uh, we'll go through various returns. Of course, the average return of the stock market, the S&P 500, is basically 11% a year. So if you want to use it for your own calculations, uh, I always just base it on 11%. That'll be uh, a nice, uh, uh, e nice, uh, realistic number that you can go for. All right, so let's bring in our savings plan formula, we call this. This is like our investment formula. This looks like a, a big one and uh, a, lot of, a lot of parts to it. Uh, it's not too bad, though. Um, if we, as long as we use this one, PMT is our monthly payment. APR, of course, is our interest rate. Notice that's located in two different spots. N is the number of payments for what we're going to do today in this video. All of them are going to be 12, um, just because we do deal with monthly payments. Y is the number of years that you're going to be investing with this. And typically, when we're talking about stock market, we don't want to invest in anything uh, shorter than about three, four, five years minimum. Um, typically, if it's anything less than that, we'll just keep it in a savings account or something. So just because of the volatility of the stock market. But other than that, all right, so most everything that we deal with is going to be longer than... Uh, Five years, you might have one or two that are in four years. But all right, so let's kind of bring in a real life scenario. Let's let's actually plug this into the formula and see what we get here. All right, so here's our formula still, uh, and this is if we're going to save a hundred dollars a month for twenty years. Uh, the return is eleven percent. Of course, it's based off of what the stock market return is. The S and P five hundred is averaging eleven percent. How much money would we have at the end of twenty years? And this is if we invested a hundred dollars every single month for twenty years. All right, so now what we're going to do is start plugging in stuff that we know. And the first one that we go through here is the um, uh, the monthly payment amount. We know that. That's $100. So instead of writing PMT, I'm going to substitute in 100 There's our $100. Okay, uh, next up, we have balance at the end. Well, we don't know that. That's what we're trying to solve for. So um, we're not too worried about that. At this point, we're going to find that out a little bit later. Let's see, 100 bucks a month, 20 years. So why? We know our why. Um, so we're going to substitute Y, uh, 20 for Y here. So we do that now. Uh, next up, we have the interest rate, the annual percentage rate, and this one it's 11%. And when we write this in, we're going to convert it to a decimal. So 11% um, would be 0.11 as a decimal. And notice that that's located in two different spots here. So we're going to have to write it in here and here as well. So we'll do that now. 0.11 is my 11%. The final one that we have is in the number of payments per year. And again, everything that we're going to do pretty much it's going to all deal with monthly payments. That's 12 months in a year. So 12, 12, and 12. There's, so there should be three 12s here. I want, to pay, I want you to focus on this one just for a second. On this one, uh, this is n times 20. So when we substitute 12 in, it's going to be 12 times 20. This isn't going to be 1,220. It's just going to be 12 times 20. So we want to make sure that we, when we write that one in to our calculator that it, it does that. Now what we're going to do is enter this one into our calculator. All right, well, let's... Bring in our calculator. I'm going to do this one on TI Inspire. Uh, if you're doing a TI-84, you really have to pay attention to uh, parentheses. And essentially, we want a, a um, hundred times, and we're going to do a whole one big parenthesis around this whole thing, and then a big parenthesis around the top one as well. So that one's more complex, which is why we like the TI Inspire. So I'm just going to type this one into the TI Inspire here. Uh, we've got a hundred times, and the nice thing about the TI Inspire is it, it it's going to look just like this. So I've got a fraction here, and again, the fraction is control division sign will give me my fraction. All right, now up top here I have a parenthesis, so I'm going to go 1 plus, and I've got another fraction. All right, and this one's going to be 0 0.11, 0 0.11 divided by 12. All right, and this is all going to be raised to, and this is when we raise it to a power, we use this one that kind of looks like a roof here. Looks like the roof of a house, so... Um, and that's going to be 12 times 20. And then on the bottom, I have yet another fraction here. Oops, I forgot my minus 1. I don't know why, but I always do that. So let me add that in now. So just check to make sure you've got the minus 1 on yours. Uh, and then on the bottom here, I have a fraction. So again, I go control, division sign is my shortcut to my fraction. Oops. So I go 0 0.11, and that's going to be divided by 12. When I have that all entered in, all I'm going to do is hit enter. 
and that's going to give me my answer here. I should have $86,563.80, 80, 80 .38 cents. And this one asked me to round it to the nearest cent, so I'm just going to write 0 0.80. Okay, so let's bring this one back in. Let's take it to full screen here. There you go, $86,563.80. Again, if you're going to use the TI-83 or 84, that's fine. You can do that. Just write 100 times. We're going to do a big parenthesis around this whole thing. Then I'm going to do a pr this parenthesis, of course, but I'm going to do another one right here across this big thing divided by, and I'm going to do a parenthesis around this one. I mean, you've got a lot of parentheses there that you've really got to pay attention to. All right. So now that we've done that, now I want you to get a little bit of practice on this one. All right. So let's bring the next problem in. I want you to work on these two problems here. So I want you to push pause on the video now. I want you to work out both of them. After you've obtained both answers, come back and push play on the, on the video. That way we can check your answers. Check your answers on both of these two. It does ask you to round it to the nearest sense, so you want to really pay attention to that and make sure that you've got that portion correct. All right, now I want you to try two more here, and then we're going to kind of move on. So I want you to try these two, and I want you to kind of pay attention to the problems. They're very similar to each other. See if you can pay attention to what's different between the two. But anyway, do both of these two. You're going to do them just like we just did on the previous two. Uh, push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answers, come back and push play. Check your answers. All right, now this one's kind of interesting. Uh, I want to bring to light here. There's a uh, Some people refer to it as the most powerful law in the universe, and that's compound interest. Uh, it is extremely powerful. This one here, you're going to save the same amount, $161 a month, and the same interest rate. Let's pretend it's 9%. Uh, $161 a month for 9%. If you do it for 25 years, you get $180,000. Not bad. That's pretty good. But boy, if you can wait just a little bit longer, you're going to go another 23 years on top of that. You have $1.5 million, almost $1.6 million in there. That's the power of compound interest. This is why when we start saving for retirement, we want to start saving as soon as possible. And it sounds weird, but even in your teens, if you can save in your teens, you're uh, very easily going to become a millionaire. So that's why you know the biggest difference there is, boy, a lot of money there. A lot, almost nine times as much because you started saving earlier. Nine times as much. Isn't that great? So that's why um, when you're doing any sort of investments, the sooner you can get the money in there and just let it sit, it will grow and grow and grow and compound. Um, grow interest off of interest is really what we're going for there. The longer you wait, the better off you will be. All right, now I'm going to kind of spice it up a little bit. Uh, so we've done a couple of those if we're just finding out what the total amount would be. But look at this one. This one says that you want to retire in 40 years, but you want to have $2 million when you retire. So how much do you need to save per month? Okay, so we've got our formula. What we want to do is go back to our savings plan formula and plug in everything that we know. Anytime I get one of these problems, I go, I don't know how to do this. Let's just plug in what we know. So let's bring that formula in, plug in what we know. We know that $2 million is going to be our ending amount. We don't know what our payment amount is. We're going to actually have to solve for that one. But look at what else we know. We know it's 11% interest. We've, kind of, we've done the one just like that in 40 years. Okay, well, so we know all of this stuff. We're still just looking for this. We don't know what this is. Uh, and when we're solving in mathematics, um, we need to get this one all by itself. If we can figure out payment all by itself, everything else, on the other side over here, that will tell us what the payment amount is. Well, and that looks that looks very, very complex because we've got this big fraction here and fractions within fractions. I mean, it's, it's a lot. But if we just kind of look and pay attention to what we've got here, this is payment times this entire quantity, this huge fraction right there. It's payment times that whole thing. So because of that, if I want to get rid of this, all I have to do is divide both sides by this thing here within the red parentheses. Okay, the same thing as the payment times this whole big thing in the red parentheses. So if I divide both sides by that, I get my payment all by itself. So really, this isn't too difficult of a problem. I just take my two million and divide it by this one here. Okay, I'm going to divide both sides by that. That will cancel this one out, leaving me a payment is equal to this. And again, we're just going to type this one into our calculator exactly like you see it here. This is going to be two million divided by this big number here. So let's bring in my calculator. Uh, let's see here. There's my calculator, and this time we're going to go two million. There we go, 2 million divided by, and I'm going to have it look exactly like this, just like that one there. So I need to go, uh, control division sign gives me my fraction, uh, and I'm going to go 1 plus, I've got another fraction, 0.11 divided by 12, and this is raised to the 12 times 40, 
power minus one. Of course, I didn't forget it that one time. There we go. Getting better. All right. So then down here, I'm going to go control division sign, and this would be um, 0.11 divided by 12. Notice I didn't put the zero in front when I did in these other ones. It doesn't matter which one you do. That's fine. It, it'll, it'll work out just fine. Um, okay, so I hit enter here, and I've got uh, $232.55, basically. This one asks me to round it to the nearest dollar. That's where I came up with my 233. But notice how it kind of changed it just a little bit from where the way I entered it in. Now it just goes 2 million divided by this whole thing. So this looks a little bit weird, but um, if you notice whenever I typed it in, it was fine. It looked just like this here. Uh, okay, so let's bring this in. Let's get a little bit of practice on that type of problem here. So we did all of that one. found out it was 233. I'm going to do a problem just like this here. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to solve this one. I want you to find out what my monthly payment has to be for me to retire in 50 years with $3 million. So push pause on the video now. Work through just like the problem that we just did. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. Check your answers here. Answer should have been $142 a month. So if you want to retire, $3 million, $142 a month is what it's going to cost you. That is assuming that you're going to retire in 50 years. If you retire at the normal age of 65, that means you start saving uh, when you're 10. You know? Um, no, when you're 15. Excuse me. When you're 15, you would start saving then. Sorry. Uh, 15, then um, $142 a month is all you need every single month. Um, all right, so let's do just a little bit more here. I want to get more practice on one more of these. Um, so what I want you to do right this second, uh, I, I say that I'm going to spice this one up just a little bit. I'm going to have you do two different ones. This bottom one here we haven't done in a little while, but this is our compound interest compounding monthly. You should know how to do these at this point. So push pause on the video now, obtain both of these two answers, then come back and push play. Okay, so we've got our first answer. We know that this one's 223,000 and change. Uh, the second one here is 51,000 and change. Okay, so this is nice. You know, we've done this one before. We've done this one in the past. Now I'm going to change the problem because the problem is going to say if you saved $110 a month um, for 30 years and you already started with $3,000. So then what we're going to do is combine these two together. So let's bring that problem in. Okay, so um, you, you save $110 a month. You currently have $3,000 saved for retirement, but you plan to retire in 30 years. It, uh, your investment is 9.5%. Now, this is compounded quarterly. That's what we did on the previous problem, okay? Compounded, excuse me, quarterly, I'm sorry, compounded monthly. So we're going to do the same thing on this one, compounded monthly. It's not written there, but uh, I apologize for that, but it is compounded monthly. Okay, so all we're going to do is we're going to find out each one of them. So this is two separate problems, and we're going to add the two together. First one, I figure out if I saved $110 a month for 30 years, how much would I have at 9.5% interest? And there we go, $110 a month, 9.5% interest for 30 years gives me 223000 Notice I did not round this one, okay? Um, I am just keep going there because I'm not going to round it until I get the final answer here. All right, my next one is $3,000 uh, now saved for 30 years at 9.5% compounded quarterly. That's my 12 here. Excuse me, compounded monthly. I keep saying quarterly. I'm sorry. Compounded monthly. Uh, that's where my 12 comes in here. And everything that we do uh, right now when we're combining these two will be compounded monthly. All right. And notice I did not round this one either. Okay. 51,284.585. Now what I'm going to do to find out the total amount, uh, if I started with 3,000 and I keep adding to it, all I'm going to do is add these two together. So I take my 223 uh, and I add it to my 51,000. And I round it right here. This is the step I rounded on. I don't round it before then, okay? I round it to the nearest dollar right at this step. So I'm not going to round it to the nearest dollar here and the nearest dollar here. Okay, just right here at the very, very end. All right, so um, now what I want you to do is get a little practice on this. Okay, so get some practice on this one. Push pause on the video now. After you've obtained your answer, come back and push play. But just remember, don't round it until the very, very end. Otherwise, you'll get the wrong answer. So I'll go ahead and push pause now. Check your answers here. Okay, so this one works out perfect. Um, uh, I did not round this one until the very, very end. If you rounded this one to the nearest dollar on both of these, you would end up with 191. So that would give you a different answer than what we've got here. 
So just make sure that you don't round into the very, very end. That will help you out quite a bit. And this is really just two parts. We're going to have to calculate uh, what our investment total would be after we make monthly payments and figure out what it's going to be with a st initial starting amount, no monthly payments. Then we add those two together is really what we're doing here. Okay, so try this one. Go ahead and push pause on the video now. Work through the answers. After you've obtained your answers, come back and push play. Check your answers on both of these two. So hopefully that provides a little bit more guidance here. Um, if you need additional assistance, you can rewatch this video or go back in. I have some other videos on this YouTube channel as well. Um, but hopefully that helps.